Hello, hi there, hello, hello, hello. Happy New Christmas Year thing. Hope that you uh, had a happy holiday, if that's the thing that you do in your part of the world. Very nice to have you with us. This is episode number 281 of This Ooh. Week in WordPress. We're going to talk about the WordPressy news uh, that happened, probably not just from this week, because we've had a bit of a break. I believe we've had two weeks off, so there's kind of three weeks of news to cover. Although, to be honest with you, it goes kind of quiet. Uh, looking at my RSS feed reader, there's large days of emptiness, which is very unusual. Normally, each day is filled with stuff. But I'm joined this week by three fine people. You can see them there, there, and over, yeah, over there, in different places around the screen. First of all, I'd like to welcome, and I'm going to get it right, uh, the co-host, one of the co-hosts for the show, and that's Michelle Frechette. Happy New Year, Michelle. Happy New Year to you. It's really nice to have you back. Um, Michelle has been on the show, oh, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of times, and uh, no doubt that will be the case during the year 2024. <laughs> if you don't know Michelle, what have you been up to, frankly? She is the Director of Community Engagement for Stella WP at Liquid Web. In addition to her work there, she is also the podcast barista at WPCoffeeTalk.com, uh, co-founded underrepresented in tech.com, created WP career pages. She's the president of the board for bigorangeheart.org, director of community relations and contributor at poststatus.com. You do a lot of work over there, I've noticed. Um, author, business coach and frequent organizer and speaker at WordPress events. She lives outside Rochester, New York, and she's an avid nature photographer and I'm going to have to bend her ear more because for Christmas I got myself a nice camera and um, <laughs> and I want to learn how to use it because all I'm doing bring at the it, minute is I'm pressing it. To it Asia. I'm, yeah, I'm putting it on the auto setting and then clicking the aperture button and that's it. There's nothing <laughs> so, wrong with, yeah, it nothing wrong with auto. Um, okay. You can find out more at Meet Michelle online. Uh, Michelle, any New Year's resolutions this year? You don't have to tell us if you don't want. I don't make resolutions, but oh. I do have goals. Okay. See, so resolutions, you can feel let down. But goals, if you don't quite make them, you've actually worked towards them and attained them. It's not a, it's not a failure if you don't quite make it. I like it. But I have goals. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, you got some. Okay. Um, and also, first time on this show, we've got Mark. Oh, Mark, I'm going to mess it up. Mark Benzacane. Benzacane. Keen. Benzacane. Yeah, oh, you, got so yeah, you got it on the third try. Or yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's good. Uh, Mark's joining us. It's like one in the morning or something because he's in California. Uh, so <laughs> really grateful for the getting up early thing that you're doing. Mark has been involved with the WordPress community for over 13 years. For 10 of those years, he's a member of the team that made up ServerPress. Oh, that's kind of cool. He is now the marketing lead for Main WP, which I'm sure many of you have heard of, which is an easy-to-use, privacy-focused Word WordPress management dashboard, as well as Site District, which is a collaborative managed WordPress host. What do you do over at Main WP, Mark? What is your responsibilities there? Um, it's it's mostly all marketing, um, just getting the word out there, who we are, making sure that uh, people have the, the right idea of who we are, what we are, and uh, making people aware that, uh, you know, I... Uh, one of the things that I really like about Main WP, and and I've known Dennis for I don't know twelve years or eleven years or something like that, is that they've always been super privacy focused. But also, it's it's we're not a SaaS model. I think that SaaS fatigue is going to be uh, kind of the buzz phrase of twenty twenty four, and uh, <laughs> and uh, people are looking for you know you self manage your your WordPress. Uh, a lot of people self manage WordPress, so why not self manage your WordPress management as well? And so, yeah, um, I really like getting the word out there. I think the people at, at Main WP are awesome. They always have been. And uh, so I'm really excited to be working with them. Yeah, I've noticed. I have to say, I'm a, I've been a Main WP user for, oh, I reckon about six years, maybe seven years, something like that. And uh, log in every morning, even on the weekends, actually, just in case. And, um, and it's a brilliant tool. And I have noticed that the marketing uh, endeavors have gone up a lot recently, haven't they? What with Dennis making videos and all of the contributions that you've, you've been making. Yeah, no doubt yeah. As well. I'd love to take credit for those, but that's just the team just like kicking some serious butt. Yeah, um, doing a good job out there and, and getting updates up out there. Yeah, 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 left, right, and center partnerships and all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, right. Okay, well, thanks yeah. for joining us. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, it's the Thank first you for having many me. times. And the third, but this is easier because Jen is just as easy. I can understand. There's no left or right going on there. Uh, Jen Harris, how are you doing? Good. Um, it's very nice to have you. Jen's been on the show before. 
Uh, Jen is an accessibility advocate and WordPress developer with over a decade of experience. We'll talk a little bit about accessibility in this episode. At her company, Easy, do I say it as Easy Ally? Ally, Ally Guide. She specializes in helping their accessibility journey with Done For You Guides, tutorials and tools. She's also spoken at several uh, events on accessibility, including WordCamp US in 2023. At Anfira, Jen specializes helping solve and prevent WordPress problems. She works with a wide range of website clients from multi-million dollar companies to solopreneurs, maintaining their WordPress sites care plans and making their WordPress journey less stressful. She also organizes the Baltimore WordPress meetup and is an active participant in many online groups. Same question to you, Jen, any New Year's resolutions? So uh, one of the groups that I'm in, Focus WP, what they do is the word of the year. Oh, nice. So basically you pick kind of a word or a concept that you're going to work on for the year. So it's not specifically a goal, it's more of a process. Okay. So you're just kind of going to work on, you know, some aspect of your personal life or your business that you just want to make some small improvements to and just keep going on through the year. Uh, mine, so mine my word, this year, go on, what's yours? <laughs> mine is consistency. Oh, okay. M- mine it, would be it's sleeping. very easy to get pulled <laughs> in many different directions and to not necessarily consistently focus on, you know, one specific topic. So. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah, I, I'm cool. a j- jack of all trades, master of none kind of guy. And um, I'm, I very, very rarely am consistent. This, is, this podcast is about the only consistent thing that I've done in, in years. And uh, I'm quite glad at least one thing in my life. On my gravestone, it'll probably say he wasn't very consistent, was he? <laughs> Um, but he, but he got better at sleeping. Hopefully, it'll say <laughs> something along those lines. Well, what about that? So, three really different but very, very experienced WordPressers on the show today. Um, if you are joining us on the socials and you're doing that live, appreciate it. If you want to uh, help the show get some more engagement, oh, we'd really appreciate your efforts there. He said, scrambling to try and find the right caption. There it is. Go and share this. It's at wpbuilds.com forward slash live. If you go there and you're logged into a Google account, you'll be able to use the YouTube comments on the side. But if you're not logged into a YouTube account and you want to remain anonymous, there's a little box at the top right inside the video, and you can actually access an anonymized chat uh, inside the video. If you happen to be joining us on Facebook, and why wouldn't you? Go to wave.video forward slash lives forward slash Facebook, and that will de anonymize you and it will tell us who you are where you're from. Otherwise, you just come across as that random avatar, that, that gray head with nary a name by its side. Okay, Mystery person. The mystery person. But we've been joined already by Courtney Robertson. She's saying happy 2024. You too, Courtney. Um, I hope you have a happy 2024 and hopefully I'll see you at some point during the next year. Elliot from just down the road from where I live. Happy New Year, he says. Uh, Then we've got some weird thing which always comes from Twitch. All the weird comments come from Twitch. Twitch, sort your sort your life out. Don't allow the weird comments because I'm never going to put them on the screen. Uh, Peter, <laughs> oh, Peter, Peter Ingersoll Peter. joins us every week and tells us how cold it is in Connecticut, and it's minus yeah, two degrees centigrade here. apparently in Connecticut it, under mostly sunny skies. Schools across the state have dis ah oh, delayed opening after a snowy weekend. That was always my favourite bit of school. When you got to, you had a snow day, we call it, and you didn't actually have to go. And usually it was because there was about this much snow in the UK. But this much snow in the UK is enough to just wipe us out. There's nobody can do anything if there's this much snow because we're rubbish. We have no infrastructure. Can we, we get snow? Yeah, Michelle, but we, get, we set up for it, right? Up there, you can get your snow handled. I have four, we got four inches of snow over the weekend. Yeah, that's 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 just just it's decorations nothing. and rods. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's like exactly. a decade's worth of snow in the UK these days. When I was a kid, though, we did actually get quite a lot of snow, and I have noticed. I think we're at that exact tipping point of if you th- if you're into global warming, I think we might be in the part where it gets there's a real noticeable change. So we used to get loads yeah. of snow, and now we get hardly any. I mean, really hardly any. It's really rare now. Cami says good morning. Paul Bedford says he's happy he's not at your part of the world, Peter. It's around 30. Oh, stop it. 
30 degrees centigrade here in Pretoria. I will swap with you in a heartbeat, Paul. Uh, South Africa with thunderstorms expected later. Well, we get those, so I'm all right with that. Uh, Marcus <laughs> Burnett joins us to say happy 2024, everybody. Missing the show, and I'm glad to see these beautiful faces this morning. You're very kind. Oh, I've still got my hat on. I've only just noticed I've got my hat on. <laughs> I thought, I thought it was I'll a leave, choice. I'll leave it on I was, no. was going to comment on how much uh, uh, I liked your hat. I've I, only I just used... looked and there. <laughs> I'm going to keep it I, on. That's good. I have a collection of about 30 hats, but once I shave my head, they all come have... down to my eyes. Oh, so oh I Michelle can't wear any wins. Look at oh, there you go, Michelle. That's awesome. <laughs> Who has that lying around? Who has that? That's brilliant. She's like have, the Statue of Liberty. I have, more. <laughs> I have so many. I have so many tiaras on my desk. Oh, funny. That's great. Uh, <laughs> kitchen sink. WP Kitchen Sink WordPress. And he says it's Adam because I Adam never Silver. make the connection. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. He says Mark is up early. Yeah, he's on the West Coast. He is. So, think it, so honestly, is Cammy. Cammy's over in Oregon, so yeah. she's up there too watching us. You people are too good. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for or joining crazy. us. We've done the preamble bit. Please share it. Get the people in the comments. That would be really nice. Okie dokie. Right. Let's just get the screen shared a little bit. A few bits of promotional stuff. I apologize. We've got to pay the bills. Uh, the first thing is, this is our website. Apparently, we have a menu which won't go away. Just, I oh know, there you go. There we go. Um, this is what we do. We do a podcast each and every week. We do this show each and every week. And if you want to stay updated with that, you can click and put your email in there. We also have a, um, a little calendar here, which tells you what we're doing. And you can see in the upcoming week, we've got a Gato GraphQL webinar episode. It's going to be the fifth and final episode in the series, all about what the Gato GraphQL plugin from Leo Lozovich can do. And oh my Lord, I am not exaggerating. If you're like slightly on the techie side, but you're slightly not on the techie side and you want to be able to do really complicated things, his plugin will enable you to do it. It is truly marvelous. There's a bit of a learning curve, but check it out. Fifth episode coming up. And then we've got an episode of the Speed It Up show with Sabrina Zidane. That's all happening at the same URL as all of the live stuff, wpbuilds.com forward slash live. Uh, you can always find that schedule on the schedule page. It's forward slash schedule, by the way. It's this exact same thing. But uh, yeah, there. And also, I have some really interesting news about, oh, I don't know, about 28 years ago or something, I started the WP Builds podcast with David Wormsley, and he's been doing it with me ever since. Every other week, David and I have been on the mic talking about WordPress, and he decided that he's probably not going to be using WordPress much anymore. So he decided I'm not going to be on WP Builds anymore. Uh, and that was fine. We said our goodbyes and everything. Then like a week later, he phoned me up and said, can we do a different podcast? <laughs> I was like, yes, get back, because I really enjoy being in his company. So we've started a new podcast called No S The No Script Show. You can find it at no script, all as one word, dot show. It's all about web development, but it's take the WordPress bit out, and it's all about HTML and CSS and getting back to the basics. Um, but I've decided to inject that into the WP Builds feed for the next three or four weeks. So the last episode that we released is kind of like a hijack of the podcast. And it's me and David talking about what this new podcast in, uh, what it's about. HTML, CSS, basically, and the, the need to not use as much JavaScript. And uh, yeah, it'll be hopefully quite an interesting, quite an interesting show. He's really into that, and I, he's taking me along a ride, so it'll be quite fun to to watch that happen. So he okay. was only dead to you for a week, is that right? Yeah, like honestly, Paul? it literally. We said we recorded the farewell episode. I had a I shed a tear. I got a tiny violin out and played terribly. <laughs> Um, and then uh, literally like four days later, he called me up and he said, can we do another one? <laughs> so, I love it. Yeah, it's lovely. I love it. It's really nice. So that's going to be entirely new, something in totally different. But in about four or five, six weeks, I'll just separate them out so that they don't, you know, they're not pollinating each other anymore. OK, let's get into the WordPressy stuff from the last few weeks in that case. I, I just wanted to put this one in your path, dear listener. Uh, this was written on December the 28th by Anne. Anne McCartney, you've probably heard of Anne. She's been on the show a few times, and we've done a few bits and pieces together. And she's just trying to sum up a, a good place to begin if you're not really that into Gutenberg or perhaps haven't really explored it as much. Her job is, obviously, part of that is to promote the usage of Gutenberg. And she just put this nice article together explaining some of the top line features which will really speed up your journey that you may not have used before. 
Um, the command palette is a bit like Spotlight on the Mac, where you can invoke, the, invoke this thing from almost anywhere in your WordPress website and then tell it what you want to do. So I want to create a new post. You could type add and then P for post, and it'll give you that. But it's going to have lots of contextual stuff in 2024, so it'll know where you are on your website, and it'll offer suggestions pertinent to what you uh, are currently doing. Maybe it'll even learn a little bit about what you do typically. And, give you that advice. So that's good. The style book, if you haven't invoked this before, this is a fabulous way of checking what your site will look like. You can look at how changes that you make to CSS will reflect across all the blocks on your website. So you can just see everything all in one interface. So that's really, really useful. You might want to just see what it does to one block, but it will show you it for all the blocks so you can get consistency. It's a perfect thing for designers. Um, there's a bunch of styling shortcuts coming as well. So, uh, or rather, they are here. They're available. I don't know if you've used them before, but if you just want to take the style of one block, you can do that with a simple copy and paste, you know, like you do on a Mac or a Windows machine. And you can just open up a block, copy its styles, paste it into a new block. And obviously, you can decide whether you want that to be done on every instance of the block. That's a real time saver. Distraction-free mode. I've explained how... In 2024, I want to be distraction free. And uh, this is great. You can make all of the UI go away. Just focus on the writing. And you can focus on just the thing that you're interested in. If you haven't used patterns before, that's a great way of making things more quick and saving them away. You can save like global patterns. They're called sync patterns. There's a whole bunch of stuff. List view. You can invoke that little list view on the left hand side. Anyway, there it all is in this one little article. And I thought it was worth mentioning. I hope, I, I really hope that the members of our panel are using Gutenberg. Maybe you're not. But if you are, that will demonstrate all the different things that you could use. Any thoughts on that, dear team? Uh, uh, several. Um, the first one is the command palette. I find it's helpful occasionally, but in general, it's actually terrible for your memory. So oh, humans go on, tell remember me more. Things, things in um, big events. And then they remember the, the little actions that, that they took in between. So part of why COVID is both a day and a century to us is because for most of us, there weren't any big things that happened during that whole time gap. But for the command palette, if I did it in like two keystrokes, I don't remember necessarily what I did. So if I do several of these events an hour later, I have absolutely no idea what I did. But if oh. I actually navigate to the menu and I click through, I remember going on that journey. I remember taking that path. And an hour later, I remember what the heck I did to change the color of that icon. It's an interesting point. I hadn't really thought about that. I only saw it from the perspective of it's quicker, a, therefore, it's, ergo, it's better. But yeah, that's a good point. If you, sometimes uh, quick is good, but sometimes if you're making, especially uh, early when you're setting up a website and you're turning a whole lot of things on and off, you completely forget what you do if you don't actually have a process and go through the whole process. And remember, oh yeah, this is that part of the process. This is the next part of the process. And I remember what the heck I did. Right. Okay. So it's a bit like when you do a Google search or something, then you know, six weeks from now, you know, you found that perfect thing somewhere on Google, but you can't quite remember how you did it. That's interesting. Exactly. Um, yeah. And then on, on the style book, I like the concept, but I've also met clients and they go in and they individually style everything they can possibly find. Right. So when you try to make, you know, a global change, you end up it not actually affecting a whole lot of things because the client went in there and individually styled a whole bunch of stuff. And the other grievance I have about Stylebook, which is really part of what's shipping with WordPress, is the styles that they include. Like one of the styles they, in, like several of the styles are really poor for accessibility. I mean, one of them is literally make my entire website link blue text. Right. So that the whole website looks like this link and it gives you like ADD and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Everything's a link. I don't know what to click. Which uh, when I think the WordPress 20th anniversary website first was launched, 
Um, those of us in the accessibility group like spammed them like crazy with feedback because they actually launched the whole website in Link Blue. It's oh. it's still available on uh, archive.org. Right, you can grab right. The okay. entire yeah. WordPress 20th anniversary website completely in Link Blue. It's it's just a what not to do. So I, guess... I I really think that they shouldn't be shipping as defaults things that are just really really poor usability. I guess and accessibility. Um... Yeah, it, it, would it would this be a sort of a client training thing? Do you feel like you've got more things to tell your client now with some of these innovations? Like, don't touch that thing mm -hmm. until you've yes. learned the other thing. Okay, I get it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's hard for me to because I don't really work with clients directly anymore, so I don't really have that interplay. The um, and and I know broadly speaking what I'm doing. Um, I I don't really come across that, and I don't fall into that trap. But I, now that you've said it, that does make sense. There's more things that the client needs to not touch, like little red warnings, beware, there be monsters kind of thing. Yeah, okay, all right. Anything else on that, Jen? Uh, no, okay. up to Mark and Michelle. Okay, over to you two. If you've got anything, if not, we will move on. I've always I, been I, a huge fan of uh, keyboard shortcuts. So when I learn the keyboard shortcuts, I'm a happy girl to pull up the right blocks and things like that. So. For me, um, I can see things like this having their place for sure. As far as like customers and things like that, that's where I use a lot of controls over what they have actual access to, to not make a lot of cha those changes style-wise and things like that, depending on what your, um, your contract is with that customer for sure. But if, it reminds me a little bit of like the remote controls that have tape over all of the buttons that you don't want grandma <laughs> to touch. <laughs> yeah. Except the power yeah. and the volume and the channel yeah. kind of thing. So um, I think that should be the picture of all of those like controls for use for user um, levels <laughs> in WordPress. Like, and this is the grandma one with tape over everything. <laughs> I have a uh, I have a Plex box uh, Plex server, so it's a media server, and uh, and I have taped over the the power. Uh, so that you can't actually turn off the power. I've literally covered it in <laughs> tape so that the children cannot unplug it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, you. Do you actually, are, are you, is that your thing then, keyboard shortcuts? Because I, I never, I say never, I, I can do command C and command V. I know those ones, right? But in almost nothing else do I take the time to learn keyboard shortcuts. I've been, I've been using a Mac for over 10 years now, and I still the the muscle memory still tries to do some of the keyboards from uh, PC oh, from back in the day. <laughs> they are hardwired. Yeah. yeah, I never really yeah. bother with that kind of stuff. And I don't really, you can invoke the command palette. I, I think it's K, uh, command K or something like that. It's actually written in the article. I should probably just find it. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Yeah, command K. But I would never invoke it that way. Um, I would probably, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I just don't really use keyboard shortcuts. Anyway, Mark, sorry. I try to stay outside of doing any development as much as possible, probably because I think people have issued a moratorium on me doing that. Um, I tend <laughs> I tend to cause more problems than anything. Um, however, I'm with Michelle. I'm a huge fan of keyboard shortcuts. And, um, and to Jen's point about uh, remembering the journey, um, I can barely remember what I had for breakfast on a day-to-day -day basis. And so... Um, for me, uh, remembering a, a workflow of how I got somewhere, I'm going to forget it 10 minutes later anyway. So um, it's, you know, I think different people just process things differently. And I can certainly see your point. But um, for me, it's about how do I get to my end result as quickly as possible. And, and so I do tend to learn keyboard shortcuts. Um, it, Michelle, it's interesting that you bring up using keyboard shortcuts from PC I, I with ServerPress because we were multi-platform and it was an application. I went from PC to Mac so regularly that my fingers developed muscle memory as to which keyboard I was on and it just automatically remembered which keyboard shortcuts to go on. And it reminds me of the old days of going from a stick shift car to an automatic car where you just yeah. like you, you knew what seat you were in, you felt it, and you just automatically did not throw people through the window because you were trying to push the clutch in the automatic car. So. <laughs> uh, that's such an interesting little tale you just told because I've never, ever, ever, ever driven a manu uh, an automatic car. Really? And then just after Christmas, really? 
Well, in the UK, nobody has an automatic. Everybody has a manual. Everybody has stick shift. Yeah, but okay. I just I found this car. I know I knew I needed a new car, and I found this really great deal on an automatic. So I got it. Man alive, have I had to unlearn. I, <laughs> my left leg is just constantly twitching, and my hand is constantly going to the gear stick. I nearly caused a pile up the other day by pushing the brake on, like full on on a on a motorway. What do you call yeah. it? A freeway. Yeah wasn't yeah. funny i was actually pretty terrified because my foot yeah. was doing things involuntarily that's weird how that happens isn't it it's even um, stranger going to the uk and driving a, a manual transmission on the wrong side of the it car was, it was the funny wrong because side. <laughs> nathan just showed his left hand when he's doing the, yeah. the, the motion of the the stick shift i it's was in right. ireland right. i was it in ireland rain. and rented a car and oh my goodness it took me like two days to remember it's it's one thing to drive on the left side of the road but to actually like remember Shift. the yeah. the shifting and all yeah. of that it was yeah. it was yeah. a learning curve there's a perfect way of framing that conversation and that is you drive on the right side of the road and we drive on the left uh, so nobody's wrong. It's not like right or wrong. You drive on the right, we drive on the wrong. Um, that's yeah, it's what, weird. That's, that's what people but in the UK like say. It's your brain to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, Try and... and whenever I go to France and drive, my because I, again I always get a manual. My hand is constantly smashing into the door. <laughs> to try and find the the stick i believe it yeah yeah <laughs> okay so we got totally off piste uh we went from That's the cool. command palette to uh automatic versus manual cars uh but yeah so cammy says she's been driving manual since 1986 well cammy all i can say is i don't think i'll be getting another automatic i've, <laughs> I've put too many lives in danger uh, in, in the space of a week uh, i'll get used to it i think i'll get used to it what i need is some kind of caliper to lock my leg down and just keep it there <laughs> Uh, right, okay, sorry, totally, totally off piste. Right, let's get back to the WordPressy stuff, shall we? Okay, I thought this was interesting. So this was the uh, the state of the word happened um, last year, right at the end. I believe it was on the 11th of December. It was in Madrid. A few other people that have been mm -hmm. on this were actually uh, in the show. And um, Matt addressed enough questions that he could do in the time that he had available. But he also wrote um, on make.wordpress.org. He, he allowed people to, to keep adding their questions and he, he answered what he thought. Um, I was wanting to use this not as a trampoline to say what Matt said, but I found some questions that I thought were interesting. I'm just keen to just keen to get your thoughts really dear panel see what you think so one of the questions he was asked was this and i know this uh goes right into michelle especially your wheelhouse and the question was uh in the past year or years some people have left or reduced their contribution uh what are the plans to protect long-term contributors and make them feel safe now i don't know quite what the wording safe means there but michelle have you had any thoughts on that do you know anybody that's gone through this or leaving because mm. they didn't feel welcomed or what have you? i would i would actually guess that this has more to do with um mika mika sorry mika i always say her name wrong first yeah. before i get it right um and um her what she went through with the plugins team and the harassment that she dealt with. I would guess that the safe, you know, the, the talking about safety probably had something to do with that, but I couldn't speak a hundred percent on what, what that person's question spoke to. So, yeah, it's interesting. But I think that. it has a lot to do with that. I think that there's, when it comes, you know, you and I have talked a lot about underrepresentation and things like that. Um, and there's definitely an aspect of security and feeling safe in those environments when you are an underrepresented person. Um, so there's probably a, an, you know, I could say that there's a level, a level of that as well, but I can't really ascribe what that person was talking about specifically. But I think when it comes to those two things, making sure that the people who are contributing are not in the direct line of fire of people who are not happy with the way things are and the pro and the procedures that are in place. Um, you know, I, I moderate photos. There are people who are not happy that their photo doesn't make it into the photo directory. But if it's a bad photo, I'm not going to put it in. If it's a nude photo, I'm not going to put it in. You know, if it's a, if it's a picture of war, we're not going to put it in because we have um, procedures in place and protocols for those kinds of things. Um, and so there are people who are like, but but it was a artistic photo. Well, yeah, perhaps it was, but it's the subject matter still goes against our our, our, um, our code. And so there are people who are not happy 
about those things and they take it out personally if they can on the people who are in the position of power to approve and not approve those things. So I think that's one aspect of it. But then of course, there's always the aspect too of underrepresentation and making people um, not only feel welcome, but actually welcoming them. There's a big difference, right? Between making somebody feel welcome and actually welcoming people to a space. And so I think that there is a level of that as well. At least that that's what I would read into that. It's yeah. making sure that people are welcomed. That's interesting. I, I really hadn't thought about the Mika angle, but that was the perfect framing of that, I think. And I, I guess if people are gonna volunteer to do things, which Mika was doing in spades for years and years and years and years. Um, the last thing you want is to be like verbally attacked. Um, and I think on, on some occasions it got very scary. And I know there are other members of the community yeah. that have really felt very actually threatened uh, by some of the things that come their way. So uh, maybe that question was about policing that. How do we protect those people or be, anonymize yeah. their, you know, like you, Michelle, let's say in the case of those images, does it have to emanate from you, for example? Can it just no, as a matter of fact, it doesn't now. Uh, yeah, uh, nice. it doesn't okay. at all. Okay. I mean, if, if you were to be able to log in and see the back end of the site, you could see who approved and didn't approve them because that's how WordPress works. Yep. But that's not public public information. And okay. I think that that's by design. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mark, Jen, anything on that? Or do you want me to move to the next uh, question? Yeah. The um, a number of people who contribute on the accessibility team have definitely expressed that there is uh, bullying that's been happening, where mm -hmm. there are a large number of users who are like, but only a couple people need accessibility. We need to push features forward. Features are more important. So instead of trying to clean up code and make it accessible on the very first go around, they're saying, well, you can just patch it later. Well, that's kind of like trying to add plumbing to your house after you already finished the kitchen. That's, that's not going to go well. <laughs> I mean, if the kitchen faucet doesn't turn on for people, the kitchen faucet doesn't turn on. That's, th that's a fundamentally broken thing that you're delivering. So, and there's quite frankly a large number of vocal people out there who have been blatantly bullying the smaller number of people who are saying, yes, this needs to work for everyone. We shouldn't just be throwing features forward. We should really think about the architecture and how we're coding everything and make sure that things like security and accessibility are put in there at the very beginning. So we're not trying to rewire everything and manage mounds and mounds of deprecated code. I was talking with, uh, I think Steve Jones had been making a contribution to the table block. And he's like, oh, this is a quick fix. And then he found the mound of deprecated code from previous versions where it had just not been, people hadn't thought about how it needed to work for everyone. And so there's just this whole mound of old code that that you have to also maintain and bring forward with the changes. Thank you uh, for that, Jen. Uh, some sort of serendipity going on today in that um, the person who I think maybe asked that question just dipped into the comments. I, I don't actually know if that's the case because Matt himself, as you can see on the screen, um, Matt himself kind of put the question in his own comment as a you know he did it as a block quote or something like that but um from the comments it looks like um jose apologies jose if i've got your name wrong it looks like that was in fact your question to matt um if that was the case and you're still with us i'd love to know what you meant by this feeling safe bit because it fit i feel like you maybe joined the conversation after michelle said her piece she was saying maybe it was surrounding you know, bullying or she drew, drew attention to Mika uh, in the plugin review team. And then Jen obviously developed that a little bit in terms of accessibility and the, the people who were feeling like they had been bullied. So if you feel like making a comment about that, uh, Jose, we'd love to hear it. But I'll pass the torch to Mark. Have you got anything to say about that um, one? Yeah, actually, I think one of the things that we also have to consider, and, and this is going to go into, I think, a, another question that was asked on the same uh on the same page um it, it goes into 
we have to keep in mind that it's not just the people who are getting bullied. It is the people who have been lurking and looking at WordPress and saying, I'm thinking about, you know, contributing. Maybe I want to contribute here. Maybe, you know, I'm motivated to to volunteer some of my time. And then they see this and they see this. this and a lot of this bullying, by the way, is very public. It's not it's not like you know, behind the scenes or behind closed doors, as everything should be. Uh, I, I'm not saying it should be behind closed doors. I'm yeah, saying yeah, it yeah, should yeah. be. I, yeah. um, <laughs> by the way, it's it's uh, six o'clock in the morning here. Anyway. Um, <laughs> You're doing well. Keep the coffee. Keep the coffee going. Um, but, but we have to keep in mind that uh, for every one person who is being vocal about it, there could be a hundred people who have thought about getting into WordPress or contributing to WordPress that are like, why would I want to even get into this drama? Why would I want to even take part in this when when people, you know, when they preach one thing about being welcoming and open and all this thing, all this stuff, and then someone comes in with a, with, you know, a way to improve it or a way to um, to appeal to a smaller demographic or or anything and they get lambasted for it. And why would I want to do that? So it, it's it's much further reaching than just what we see, unfortunately, in my opinion. And I've had a lot of offline, as I'm sure everyone has, offline conversations with people who just do not feel uh, safe uh, in general because they they already have enough to deal with making a living providing for their kids, all these things. And then to go in and, and have that rather than it just being this, you know, open conversation where it's it's fine to have different ideas, but but let's have like real conversations about it where we progress as opposed to as opposed to uh, blowing someone off just because we don't like their idea. And, you know, I could go I, on about this. Yeah, no, I, I think that was really nicely put. But but I, I guess, again, dear listener, if you're listening to this and you're sort of blowing this off like, well, it's just words or something, it, it doesn't really feel like just words when you're on the receiving end of it. And it isn't just and it's not just people disagreeing in some cases about, I don't know, the effectiveness of, of an implementation in software. I, I think this sometimes literally strays into threatening behavior where you, you have the intuition that somebody's going to be knocking on your door. And, you know, anything approaching that is is horrible. But the, the ladder, the, the little steps that lead to that are also horrible. And I guess the other thing to throw in is that we have some people who contribute such significant amounts um, that if they disappear, we really do destabilize a large part of the, the whole pyramid of things that we've got. So in the case of Mika, um, she did so much, and her stepping away um, is, is a big thing. And one person, that one person has a, a, a really big impact on the community. Well, so Look um, how long it's taking to get a plugin yeah. approved these days in the repository. And, yeah. I, and, and, and I mean, I back in the day, I had conversations with Mika. It's been a while, but um, she was always stressing about you know, getting these plugins approved and, and going through that and, and losing her uh, is huge. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that also brings up a point in the general WordPress ecosystem that this is the largest content management system in the world, powering, you know, millions and millions of websites. And yet the big bottleneck is volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. What, why with the, with the literally billions of dollars that are going into the whole WordPress ecosystem, why don't we have people who are actually employees who are, who are doing this? Yeah. Another can of worms, that one, isn't it? We could probably open that and um, go on. Because about then, that. then you have an actual like reliable base of, of people. I mean, I'm not trying to make this no longer open source. I love open source, but also we need stability given the giant market share that WordPress has. The The whole lack of stability is part of why companies don't choose WordPress. Hmm. I'm going to, um, I'm just going to flip it over to uh, Jose. Uh, so, sorry, Jose, again, if I've got your name wrong, he's been very good at replying. I appreciate that. Uh, he says, thanks. Yeah, it's definitely him. Uh, the case that were mentioned um, were ones that were being considered when the question was posed. Uh, but besides more that um, obviously you know about that have not been made public yet. 
Uh, he said, I saw in many cases this that those people that suffered from bullying, bullying had to face it alone. Okay, so that adds context to it as well. It's not just that it's happening, but it's there's nowhere to turn. I definitely feel that this is a fail as a community. Can I just mention at this point, Big Orange Heart, if you, uh, if you, I mean, it's not the solution always, but it's a place to turn. Um, and every contributor is needed, mainly those that have been with us for a long time. Um, I think I've just raised that one. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for your responses. Okay, so we've got context on that question. And obviously, there's a few things that you know about, which we don't. Um, so maybe there's some uh, more news in the year 2024. Courtney chimes in as well. The plugin team have seen an increase in submissions while simultaneously implementing a process for sustainability for the team. Over half the plugin review team are sponsored at this time, I believe. So that's, I guess, that's a slight bit of good news. And Patricia uh, BT would add that the non-sponsored contributors might be fed up and just stop if they were bullied. I, I think I'd change the word might to will. Um, I wouldn't be sticking around too long if I felt that, you know, I was getting bullied. Uh, I mean, I'd maybe I guess the nature of it might be in, in question. But OK, so that was a big question. Let's add Let's add some more. Thank you for your contributions there. That's great. I, I was going to raise loads of these, but I think given the time that we've got, we'll just raise a few and I'll just pick a couple that I thought were of interest. So excuse my editorial deciding. Um, WordPress community is getting older and older. Do you have any ideas on how to attract the younger generation? I don't feel old. But I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but it's true. Um, I don't. I don't see that. I, every time I turn up to a WordPress event, I, I don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm only seeing people of uh, a certain age and older. There's definitely there's definitely a mix. But it doesn't. It does feel like it's skewing more as the years go on. You know, uh, it's aging the, up. We call that aging. They, up. That, I'm glad you had that phrase. I was struggling. Uh, so it's aging up. So those that are in stay in often, despite what we just said. Uh, but we're not getting that that funnel into the bottom. Um, we're not getting the young people in. What do we do? What do we do? Um, I'm guessing that maybe it's not as attractive to work on a content management system as it once was with SaaS and things like that. Maybe if you're a you know a website designer, there are other options that you can go for. Whereas WordPress has had this inexorable rise, and for for ages it was just the default. I don't really know what the answer is, except maybe things like events and in-person stuff is is a good it's a good thing. Yeah, I was at the um, New Jersey Montclair meetup. Uh, in 2023. And the keynote speaker was talking about how one of the ways that he got started with coding was a boot camp. And at the boot camp, they were saying to these people who are all brand new, you know, brand new to development, brand new to trying to code. And they're telling them that PHP is a dead language, which I mean, PHP has been steadily increasing market share and is a very solid, <laughs> mature language that I think we'll be going around. For oh, no, many, PH, many... PHP has been dead for like 15 years, Jenna. <laughs> You've not heard it's afterlife. been uh... <laughs> yeah. a truly epic afterlife. Yeah, it's always um, dying. <laughs> but but one of the things is that that the the code camps are, are saying that PHP is a dead language and WordPress is on its way out. Hmm. And and when, quite frankly, the things that people are going to to get their foot in the door, when those places are saying, you know, this isn't something you should look at. They're going to trust what what their mentors and their teachers at these camps are are pushing them towards. So I would say that um, you know, getting into high schools, getting into high school programs, and getting kids into WordPress when they're in high school, getting into college programs, getting into the boot camps, where people are getting their foot in the door. That's that's that that first foot in the door experience should be something that we want to give them as a positive view of things like PHP and WordPress, because if they see that as negative, I mean, that's the memory that that's going to stick with them. That's their first impression. I think a good route maybe as well in that discussion would be the data ownership thing, which seems like a bit of an old curmudgeonly thing to talk about. And it's one that we talk about a lot, but I'm constantly thinking that kids have just given up their entire digital lives to these giant mega corporations. And there's no, there's not even an aspiration that that's weird. There's just, well, yeah, Facebook can have it all. What do I care? Yeah, I can see the ads. I don't care. And just making that argument that just 
at some point you might want to have that under your control. Um, just think about that a little bit. So maybe maybe some of that plays into it a bit. You know, think about the future. You know, why would you ever get a pension? Um, those kind of things. Think about the future, dear child. <laughs> okay, Mark, Shell, um, any solution? I, I think that one of the things we have to keep in mind is we are naturally going to age up when you have two years of a pandemic and yeah. and, <laughs> and and no in-person events, right? So the thing that I think one of the great contributors to the growth of WordPress was WordCamps. There's no doubt about it. So when you have when you have two years of no word camps and no in-person events and and meetups are all virtual and so instead of them being localized meetups all of a sudden people from you know peoria illinois are showing up to the seattle you know and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that i'm just <laughs> yeah, saying I yeah. I, i'm just saying that um you know the the whole idea and and the beauty of word camps was they started out as like these kind of localized events and the meetups were localized events and so all of a sudden we've gotten this old this older generation and so when word camps kind of came back last year it was all the old people just like family reunions kind of thing <laughs> and <laughs> and and I think, and it was something that I actually brought up to several people in Phoenix, was we as the older generation, and like you, Nathan, I don't feel old, but I know that I am. Um, I, as the older generation, we need to take it upon ourselves to bring the younger people in and we need to mentor them and we need to make some time for that. And we talk about how can we contribute into WordPress. I think that's one of the greatest ways some of us older generation people can do that is to like meet people at these work camps, especially younger ones and kind of bring them up and 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 show them the ropes and get meetups going and and all of that and and kind of create once again this groundswell from a from a grassroots kind of uh point of view as opposed to from the top down or anything like that i think that that could be helpful and wordpress is not as sexy as it used to be let's face it i mean <laughs> You know, that's, that's, it, it's not the new kid on the block. I mean, it, it really life. isn't. You know, <laughs> what's that? That's a feature of life, isn't it? Yeah, uh, right. Right. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. That uh, was interesting as well. Uh, Michelle, anything you want to add to that? I, I think it's easy as somebody who's kind of worked their way up through it. It's I, I keep saying it's still a young community, even though technically it's not because tech, you know, technology moves so quickly. But 20 years is not an incredibly long amount of time for the people who like were grassroots in it, not to feel like they still have ownership of what, you know, what happens within it. And one of the things that has to happen is people of my age, um, I might be the oldest one here or close to it, Mark, I think you and I are right around the same age, close, I think, but, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, have to be able to not only want to see a younger people in it, but, almost step aside in a lot oh, of respects. Oh, yeah, okay. Right? In order, not not leave, right? I'm not suggesting, like Jose says, that people who have been in it a long time need to continue, right? So we have some of that consistency. But also have to be willing to bring people in alongside them and then be willing to hand the reins off to people who are younger because they need to be able to be in decision-making places as well. So that's yeah. one of the, it's really difficult when you stay with a project so long and you feel such ownership over it, whether it's community, whether it's code, whether any of those things to then say, I'm going to just be a user now and let somebody else lead. It's not easy. It That's a really good point. I'd never even thought of that. And it feels like in, in business management, it's always better to have older people, right? Because you just want those experience levels. But with, with something like this, it's not quite that, is it? Because technology, yeah. especially public facing technology that people are going to use, you need the you need those cool new ideas and the things coming through. And yeah. you're right, once you've got your claws in something, it's hard to let go, isn't it? It's hard to it's hard it to is. let the 18 and year old talk to you yeah. about what you should be doing. I, because, you know, I, yeah, I used to turn to my daughter to see what was, you know, hip. And yeah. we don't even use the word hip, right? Yeah. She's she's in her 30s now. So she is not even the demographic. Like my own children are not the demographic. Yeah. I have one child. Okay. Uh, and so, she, she and her husband. So, so I actually can't even turn within my own family unless I'm looking at nieces and nephews who are much younger to find out what is important to them. You know, it used to be important to us to say like, you own your own data. That is super important and it still is important. 
Um, but now, like people who are my daughter's age and younger are often looking at what is the ethos behind? You know, what are the ethics behind? Where is the morality in? And how is is this technology being used um, for the greater good? And how hmm. and what does that mean as, as opposed to ownership of your own data? How do I feel part of the community and how am I using this um, within the greater global community to affect good? Uh, because we have so many things happening in the world that are challenging and scary. I think that's really hard to let go, isn't it? But maybe that's what it we is. need. Maybe that if we want to encourage a younger audience, if that's an actual thing and we're worried about it, maybe we need to be able to let those voices be heard and get the 17 year olds in and allow them to shout about their ideas and all of that kind of thing. Yeah, that's really interesting. James Giroux, thank you for joining us, James. He says he loved what Michelle uh, said about handing off to others. Um, for many of us, we work hard to get to where we are, so it isn't easy letting go. Yeah, really uh, good point. Yeah, it's like when, like me, when you've got like teenage kids, it's like I'm so used to telling them what they should do, it's hard to let them tell me what they should do. It's like, oh, can we just rewind 10 years and just go back yeah. to back yeah. to how it was? It's not yeah. easy. Uh, Elliot, it's bittersweet for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Elliot yeah. says when he was at university eight years ago, he remembers some people would say PHP and WordPress will be dead in a few years. Yeah. And there's more modern options. I tried to convince them otherwise. It's interesting as well. I just think the interface has changed as well. Because when, when I began with computers, it was a computer. It, you know, you plugged it into the wall and there was a box and a screen and a keyboard and a mouse. And my kids like they're not touching any of that stuff it's all something which goes in a bag or in a pocket and the interface for creating it is as good on the handheld thing as it is everywhere else and so a, yeah there's a lot to think about there i just want to do one more quick one and i don't know if we care about this or not but i'm, I'm interested in your thoughts um and it says the w3 according to w3 techs and we'll come on to something of theirs in a minute wordpress usage has been going down since june i mean even saying it doesn't sound like it's that big of a deal does it really so six months we've had up and up and up and up and then we've had six months of down what do you think about these numbers any ideas on what we can re do to reverse the trend and i am going to include matt's comments here because i thought it was important uh, data liberation so this new initiative to uh, enable dozens of platforms to import data to begin a WordPress website from content that you already have somewhere else. There's going to be a lot of work done on that. E-commerce, he says, the plugins in e-commerce need to be significantly improved in terms of user experience and integrations. I can't comment to that because I don't use e-commerce in WordPress or outside of it. So, And we need to make sure all the cogs in the engine of the WP community are spinning at full wheel. And he mentions a lot of the things that we've just talked about. Okay, so that's in, in short, the question is, should we care? that it's gone from astronomically high, 43%, to this little dip where we're still in the 40s, but it's the low 40s. Should we care? Is that, is that something of concern? Um, well, on the e-commerce one, since I deal with a number of e-commerce sites, um, for example, the for someone who has not used e-commerce before, going in and setting up a new Shopify site is super guided, super easy, Quite frankly, in one hour, they have a live website with a couple of products and they are selling. That's compelling. That, I mean, that's the setup. For me, as someone who's been using WooCommerce for years and years, I can have an e-commerce set, site set up in an hour. But trying to train a user on it, trying okay. to get a user who, who does not have that experience, it it is a it feels like trying to you know, climb a, a vertical rope versus Shopify feels like a nice gentle ramp. Right. So okay. the, yeah. the, the whole WooCommerce versus like Shopify, it's just so different. And honestly, for people who just want a really simple shop and they don't want to customize things, they don't want to do add-ons, they don't need all of that. I tell them, go to Shopify. It's, yeah. You're, you're, you're done. It's, it's, it's done for you. It's going to be cheaper, faster, and easier. Well, that's a big you, thing then, isn't it? Yeah. If you need the the, the add-ons, you need the integrations, you need to customize, you need to do all that. Well, yeah, now we're talking about, about a WooCommerce project. And I have some sites that I've brought from Shopify to Woo because they needed more. Shopify wasn't giving them enough. They couldn't customize. They couldn't control things. They couldn't do filters the way they wanted. So they needed more. But the people who are shelling 
you know, five products with three colors and they're done. No, they're, they are honestly and truly much better off in the Shopify space. And I was looking at um, a year end report and it had shown that there, that there's a lot of exchange that, that happens back and forth between Woo and Shopify. A, quite a few Woo shops that become Shopify and quite a few Shopify that become Woo. And I think it's because of what people's real needs versus what they actually want to maintain. I was just looking, I clicked on the link from the data liberation section uh, of the post that we just looked at. And I was wondering if Shopify appeared in there. And actually, curiously, it doesn't. It's not on the list. Of, maybe I'm missing something. But um looks like uh, WooCommerce products to WordPress. Well, that's all those. Squarespace, Wix, all of those are being taken care of. Drupal, mm. Blogger, and what have you. But it doesn't seem to be Shopify in there. So that's interesting. Given that Matt cited e-commerce as one of those things, I wonder if we'll see more of a more of a push to bring the uh, the Shopify people along. Uh, Michelle or Mark? Uh, I I'm, think there's a lot of good. I was just say I'm 100% with what Jen said. That's yeah, nice. Okay. Great. Yeah. yeah. I think there's more data that needs to be out than to just say we have x percentage of the internet. So what does that mean? What right, are those websites right. we're looking at? Are we talking about majority e-commerce? What is, you know, that we have 43% of the total, but what is, what is, or whatever it is now, but is it, is it when people are just throwing up brochure sites, are they going to sell it to an easier? There's so much more data that we need to be able to say whether it's significant or not, um, because we don't know what the total is. We don't know what the purposes are. We don't know if it's a simple blog versus, you know, Vogue. <laughs> like there's just, there's too much to be able to say that one number defines what WordPress is to the global internet. It's interesting though, that he's picked out as number one is the data liberation. So the idea of pulling in people from mm -hmm. other platforms so that he must have some tu intuition, I'm guessing that people would like to do that, but they don't have the capacity to do that. They want to move over from one place to another, you know, um, but they can't. So, okay. So there was an awful lot in there. I will link to, as always, with everything that we show on the screen, I'll link to it in the show notes. Um, but that was an interesting article. There was loads more questions that I highlighted, but really we're, we're going to run out of time if we don't move on. So we'll quickly <laughs> move on and we'll talk about this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to describe this. I think this is what you might call a foot in mouth moment. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so we're back to the W3 text website. And I don't really know if I need to call this a survey or if it's more, I don't know. I don't know where this data comes from, but I see this piece at the beginning of each year getting a lot of attention on a lot of big websites. You know, they point to this because there's authority here. Um, and this year, uh, the CMS, the content management system of the year 2023 is, and you know it, you know what it's, it's Elementor. It's not what you thought. Um, how, what? I mean, okay, first of all, look at this. So you can see on the screen, in every year except one, uh, WordPress won it. Then in 2022, Wix won it. So after like literally a decade and more, 12, 11 years of WordPress winning it, Wix won it. And then 2023, the, the, the decision was that Elementor uh, was the winner. Now, obviously, you and I, we all know that Elementor is built on top of WordPress. It's not a content management system. It, it uses a content management system. But the thing that I thought was interesting here is how disconnected is our community from the rest of the technology world that people think that Elementor is the CMS? Like we, we have clearly somewhere Elementor's got a runaway train of media and marketing and just they're just brilliant at that stuff. And they've managed to get it to the point where they've persuaded these guys who are doing this stuff all the time um, that it's the Elementor is the thing doing it. And of course, it's not. So I, I don't know if there was anything in that for you, but I just thought that was curious. They did walk it back, I think, in a tweet or something a little bit later. But I find it curious that they walked it back in a tweet, but not on the website. Maybe they don't have a very good content management system to update their... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Number two is WooCommerce. Um, Number two is WooCommerce. <laughs> right. Yeah, look, there it is. I forgot yeah. about that. Oh, even the, better. <laughs> the question is is always who who are you surveying and what questions are you giving them? Yeah, that's true. That's you true. You know, did did Elementor, who has a gigantic email list, did they blast out to their entire email list, you know, 15 emails to vote for us? 
Yeah, maybe. Okay, cool. I get it. I see what you're saying. So yeah, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. They they it, they they see online somewhere that this survey is being done. They want to win it, but I, I, I'm not putting I am not putting the boot in on Elementor. It is a fabulous product. It has done amazing things for the popularity of WordPress. But um, uh, I, Elementor, if you did that, if you were a part of that, don't just. Shame on you. Yeah. I, I love if you read the paragraph above too, it says that it becomes hard for WordPress to consistently be in when it's reached well over 60% market share. Again, okay. where what where? what market? Really? Sixty yeah. percent? I mean don't know. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. So it's a nothing just, burger, really, isn't it? But it's kind of fun to assault. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of fun to see. Uh and they like I said, they walked it back. I'm sure they walked it back somewhere online, like their official Twitter channel or something like that, but obviously uh didn't uh update it on the website okay so that's that uh in in response to that uh web dev studio wrote a piece which began like this it was says recently a wordpress page builder was mistakenly named as the best content management system in 2023 even though it's not a cms and so what they decided to do which i thought was nice a nice way of doing it was uh, they just went through all of the different stats and things, you know, which basically tell us what we already know. It's still dependable, reliable, extensible, all of those things. And so, yeah, keep telling your clients that they can use WordPress and Elementor. You don't have to choose one or the other. You can have both if you like. Uh, okay, so there we go. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. I'm going to be attending a few events this year. Uh, I'm hopefully going to be, well, I am, unless something goes horribly wrong. Um, I'm going to be in Taipei, in Taiwan, in whenever that is, March, I think, March the 7th or something. Oh, I'm so bad. Um, in March uh, later this year. Uh, but WP Engine have put together an article about virtual conferences, things that they've spied, real world events and what have you. Look at that. WP Korea Summit, Michelle, uh, made, made the grade. And I did wonder if you three of you had any aspirations you know maybe in terms of turning up to to promote your products or services or just other quirky things you know i'd kind of like to attend some podcast events because that's something i'm into whether i will or not i don't know but uh, i'm going to be attending hopefully the three flagship events for wordpress this year so yeah it's just over to you tell us about events that you hope to hope to go to during this year well, I hope to catch a few on replay because I like to, you know, skip the first uh, 10 minutes of the talk because it's, you know, the intro and all that. And then, you know, watch the rest of it at like 1.5 speed. And then Oh, you do that. Ending. Okay. I can't I'm do terrible. it. I can't do it. No, I just can't. Like there's something about the way that the words slur and everything. I, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Interruption. Carry on. Yeah. So uh, I I generally do do that for conferences. So I'll be looking forward to uh, AxCon, which is DQ's accessibility conference, and then which is a big big conference. I'll, is that I'll a online. A I'm just going to write it down for the show notes. Is that A X E Con? Just all as one yes. word. Okay. I'll From DQ, D E Q U E. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And uh, then also uh, the WordPress Accessibility Day, which is in September, I believe. Yep. Okay, thank you. I'll put that one in as well. We've mentioned that in the past, especially when it was coming. Uh, anything from you, Mark, on that? You hoping to attend anything? I guess you've got to wear your main WP hat at some point for these things. I, I do. Um... And I know that we are sponsoring uh, WordCamp Nepal, which is coming up uh, in a week or so. But we're not actually physically going to be there. But we want to support um, a lot of these WordCamps. Um, I'm nice. I've I've always been far more of a WordCampy person. I like the hallway track a lot. I like meeting people. I like talking to people. I like getting feedback. Um, and I, I uh, have not completely planned out my year as far as where I'm going to be uh, when it comes to that. Uh, there was the one, and I forgot which one it was, which looked interesting to me only because it's in Wisconsin, which is where my kids are. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I have like a little yeah. bit of a double kind of, uh, you that's know, a solid ul reason to motive there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, um, but, um, but I am uh, really, we have our 10 year anniversary is, is uh, 
this coming up uh, shortly at the beginning of this year uh, for Main WP. And so we have a lot of really big things planned. And so all of our focus is and attention is on that right now. Okay, thinking, right. You know, kind of yeah. skews the company yeah. focus for a year or so. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, I know you're you're going to be in Thailand. I'll be uh, in Taipei. Taiwan. Yeah. Taiwan. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, I am speaking. Else? I am speaking yeah. at WordCamp Asia, so I'm excited about that. Um, I will be at WordCamp uh, Europe. All things going well. My company is sponsoring there as well, um, and I'm putting together my application. So hopefully, I'll be able to speak there if I get selected. Nice. Um, applications are open for another seven days, I believe. If anybody's interested in putting their speaker app in for Europe. Uh, speaking of that, it's a little bit different. I'm sort of skewing it slightly, but um, if you are going to be attending WordCamp Asia, if I, I believe this is only for the people who have decided to purchase a ticket and succeeded in doing that, there is uh, probably dropping in your email inbox quite soon. Um, there's the possibility for you to get on the contributor day. It's part of the ticket. You can show up, but there is limited availability. I think 450 was the number that I thought. So there's going to be a lot more people at the main event. But if you want to contribute um, in Contributor Day, which is the first day before the actual uh, event starts, then you need to go to the, the thing that you'll get in the email. I, I don't know if I should disclose the URL particularly. And look at that picture there. That's a nice picture. <laughs> WordCamp Asia last year. And they've, uh, they're have they asking in the form for you to nominate the, the area where you'd be most interested. Uh, you don't have to pick, but they're, they're obviously after sort of spreading that load out and making sure there's enough people sitting at the different tables. Okay. It was a good contributor day last year with plenty of Wi-Fi, so that was a good Oh, one. nice. Yeah, that's always fun when the Wi-Fi stops working. Yay. Uh, and then this, which I, I just, just a big hat tip from me to uh, Katie Keith. Katie's been on the show several times, and... Katie has done this same piece, uh, I think, three or two or three times in the past. Uh, it's for her company. Uh, she has Barn 2 plugins uh, with her husband. They're both the founders. I believe his name is Andrew, Andy. And, um, and uh, in January, or right at the end of December, uh, Katie releases what can only be described as a real... Uh, how to describe it? I don't really know. She She just doesn't... She, she's not editing herself, if you know what I mean. She she gives you all the data. There's only one thing she doesn't give you, and that's profit. But she gives you the amount of, you know, how many employees they've got, how much revenue they've had, where that money has been spent, things she did well, things the team did well, things the team did badly. And it, it, I just love reading it, partly because it's so candid there's something about that kind of vulnerability about it, which I really like. The, the fact that, you know, you're being human and saying, we didn't get everything right. I, I love that. Um, but also, there's just tons of learning in here. Uh, I don't have such a company, um, so I, I can't really have that bit of learning. But if I were to have a company, there's an awful lot in here. As you can see, all the numbers laid out, including the total rev revenue from the plugins, the amount of money that they gained from YouTube ads, how much they spent on affiliates, what they bought, um, what about you know the plugins, where did the time that they spent in the company go each year, uh, how they had an SEO scare, which knocked them down the Google rankings in the month of October, and they had to fix that on the fly quickly before Black Friday, and how they did it. And the fact that it knocked, I think it was 14% off that month's re revenue, which is just fascinating that you can put a number on that. If your SEO is killed for one year, what does that do to your uh, profit and loss statement for that month? And there's just absolutely loads. And so I would just like to commend uh, Katie for doing it. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I, again, I'll link to it in the show notes. I don't know if any of you want to contribute to that, if there was anything you thought was uh, meaningful in there, but I, I just loved it. I just loved reading that piece. So uh, shake of the head, nod of the head. Anybody got anything to add to that? If not, I'll just move on. I, I, I like, I think that uh, Katie is awesome. Uh, one of my favorite things about her is uh, her, her love of numbers and data. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, I, I love that about her. I like how she, she gets into that. I remember uh, the first time I saw a year in review uh, uh, report was back in the day. Pippin Williamson did one. Which yes. Was, like was also, I think to me, like also just unbelievably transparent how he would do it. And I um, remember reading that for the first time and just looking yeah. at the numbers with my jaw on yeah. the floor thinking, yeah. wow, in WordPress, you can actually turn over that. 
what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's it's really cool kind of to see that uh, that Katie's doing it uh, as well and and seeing where they're at. And congratulations to them, of course, with their ongoing success. I think that that's pretty awesome. Uh, maybe that's the bit that I like so much about it. You know, th- there's this does this team family team put together this suite of plugins, tried things, things work, things didn't work. They've got things they want to work on in 2024. And it's just it's just nice to see that in our community, the one that we cherish so much, that can happen. Um, and it's just lovely. It's just a no holes barred uh, thing. And like I said, I'll put it into the show notes, but you can find it on barn2, the number two, dot com. And it's called 2022 Year in Review and Transparency Report. So maybe go and check that out. Okay, we're going to have to go at a fairly breakneck speed from now on. Stackable have introduced a, a new plugin we've had ben uh on the podcast before talking about it and they've got this new plugin called wp interactions i'm not entirely sure um what i'm looking at except that i think there's triggers and then i think there's actions based upon those triggers and you can see that they're concentrating very much on and i think jen will probably have something to say about this they're concentrating on things like the the visuals you know As you can see on the screen, if you can't see on the screen because you're listening to the audio, things are scrolling. Uh, So, you know, you're scrolling and things are accelerating past you and things are slowing down and moving at different rates, that kind of thing. Parallax effects, hover effects, um, and so on. When I saw the details of the plugin, I kind of had this intuition that it would be more about inserting dynamic data and, I don't know, triggers like, it's a week before Christmas, show this thing. But I didn't really get that feeling from the article. But, Jen... Go for it. I know there's okay. going to be things here. Yeah. So, <laughs> one, I think it's a little confusing because in WordPress core, there is a proposal for the interactivity API, Yep. which is all focused. It specifically outlines that it is focused on front end of block and doing things on the front end, which is, of course, stirring up quite a buzz in the accessibility community as we're concerned with how is this actually going to cause interactions? And will those interactions cause a huge number of accessibility issues? Um, so I'm a little confused with Stackable trying to name their thing the exact same thing as, or, you know, very similar oh, okay. to the okay. interactivity yeah, yeah, API. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, uh, in terms of what they're doing, uh, more and more of the you know, market share is going towards mobile devices. So in general, I'm not a huge fan of doing a lot for hover effects. Hover effects are nice, but for many websites, they just don't exist for half of the people using the website because they're on a touchscreen device. Um, And then in terms of parallax and the moving scrolling content, you know, that causes all sorts of issues for people who have vestibular problems and it can cause them to literally vomit after looking at your website. So the, my first concern is that it obeys something like uh, prefers reduced motion, but while that's a feature available in every browser and operating system, most people don't actually know that it exists. Yeah. So I'm, you know, always concerned about, how they're going to, you know, handle all of that. And quite frankly, especially the older population, they don't like a lot of stuff moving. They really don't. It's a, <laughs> they it's like a, it simple and clean. It's a really difficult tightrope to tread, isn't it? Because on this show, um, one of the things that I do not wish to do is to sort of like, you know, slag a product off or anything like that. But you raise really good points, you know, and some people want animation on their website, but is that a good thing? You know, that's really the, the sort of the nature of the debate. Does it does it serve all the people or are there different ways of doing things? So, um, yeah. Interestingly, and I, I don't know, maybe this is the sort of thing that you see lying around on all the websites in all the places, Jen, but they say accessibility at the forefront. Uh, we know how but important they don't that. actually address accessibility in this. Yeah. yeah. So, um, dear Stackable team, maybe uh, maybe get in touch with uh, Jen and uh, you can have a conversation and see. Anyway, there it is. They've got a new product. Mark and Michelle, do you mind, given the amount of time we've got left, do you mind if I just move right Keep along? moving. Okay, we'll keep, keep going. Okay, thank you. Uh, right, first of all, I'm going to bring up a couple of things which 
some of the people on this panel raised after the show had started. So I haven't a clue what I'm about to show. So let's hope it's clean. Uh, this is the first one. And I can't remember which one of you raised it. So this is We Watch Your Website. I had uh, Thomas on the, the podcast talking about mm -hmm. uh, WordPress Security. hacks and all of that kind of stuff recently. Which one of you was raising this one? And do you want to just, uh, just go scroll for it, down to about 40% of the way down this okay. uh, site? About 40%. Uh, You'll see a big graphic. Probably about there. There. There you go. Perfect. So basically, the short summary is this is. Uh, they monitor millions and millions of websites, and over that monitoring span, and many of the websites come to them because they were hacked to then get on the monitoring. Um, but when they looked at who actually is hacking websites and how are websites being hacked, 60% is stolen session cookies, which Good is grief. not talked about by nearly anyone in the WordPress uh, security community. Yes vulnerabilities are coming in at 30 percent yes compromised login credentials are coming in there because you know someone gets hacked and you know then that data gets sold on the dark web and then people have reused their username and password on a whole bunch of websites and right you know the normal stuff that we've heard about for the stolen session cookies is is a huge one how do the you even take away how do you do it? Oh, easy. So what you do is you get uh, malware installed on someone's machine. And okay, there so are you're a like number a man of malwares okay, that are right. so simple that just opening a PDF in an email that, that you were sent installs malware on your computer. So, so for example, okay, okay. one of them is <sighs> that uh, there's been a Facebook class action lawsuit. Read this PDF for more information about how you can get your money and they even give a like a legit info about the actual cases that are happening but there's a malware on that pdf so once you've opened it on your machine you've installed that malware you now can have all of your session data stolen and uploaded so just to then be that clear gets... this is basically you are you are immediately uh, mm -hmm. Unless it had been logged out, you are logged into whatever thing that person was, and you are totally legitimately them. Um, Correct. You are no, so if, if you've got Amazon no, no open, no FA, no password right, needed, right. nothing. You're, you're you literally carrying. It reminds me of that fire and, sheet thing back in the like. And especially 10 if years people ago. are checking the you know the keep me logged in button, that yeah. keeps your session going for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Oh, okay, right. So this is my plea to the internet in the year 2024. Can Log we just out. stop it? Can we just stop this silliness, please? All of these people who get paid to do these silly things. <laughs> Can you all just stop? <laughs> it's not good, in, is it? In 2025, I want you to tell us how that worked out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be worse. It'll be so much worse. <laughs> Yeah, and the, oh dear. The, uh, the, the short answer is is log out. Log out, log out. When, right. when you are done done using things, log out. And also, you know, if possible, get uh, actual PHP based things on your website that log you out of your WordPress admin. Yeah. So that you, you do log out, you do stay logged out. In fact, get, get rid of the uh, allow me to stay logged in buttons. You can just hide that from your uh, WordPress login screens. I feel, I feel maybe things like passwordless logins. Um, I, ah, oh, I've completely forgotten the thing. Um, Passkeys. Like Passkeys. It's going like to be, it's going to be the thing. It feels like it's going to be. It still a, steals a, your session. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, um, but it's, it's going to be a thing <laughs> in 2024, you. but it's not going to help. And all the, but I think we've, we've become, there's so many things that we use online now. Like when, when the internet was invented, you were probably going to one, maybe two things at pass all. Passkeys also lock you. It, the, the current passkeys is, is very, very early in development. And quite frankly, most of the security people are saying, don't, don't use it yet. It's, it's too young. But the current passkeys lock you into the passkey system that yeah. you're using. Yeah. So if you get Google pass keys, you're now locked into Google. If you get Apple pass keys, you're locked into Apple. Yeah. You're um, actually locked into that pass key service and you have to go through a giant reset process if you wanted to switch from like Apple to Android. Michelle, just 
quickly, would you mind muting your mic? I think whoever's in your, I think it's probably in your office. Um, we can hear quite a lot of the, um, I've got an intuition that you might be on the wrong mic. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure if it flipped at some point during the, but th thank you, Michelle. That's great. Okay. So um, there's the cheery tale for 2024. Um, a brand new thing that you never knew about that you've got to worry about. But the lucky thing is all you've got to do is click that log out button or just clear out your cookies every week or something. No, I don't know. No, no? that doesn't help because you're Sessions, logged in cookies. on the server session. Oh. The session exists on the server, not on your browser. Got so, it. for example, there are some WordPress plugins out there that are JavaScript based that attempt to log you out. Don't use any of them. Anything that's that's JavaScript based is only happening in your browser. It doesn't log you out on the server where your actual session is stored. OK, my plea remains the same. Can you just stop log it out. now, please? <laughs> All of you. You're up to no good. We don't like it. We just want the Internet to be nice and friendly. Uh, but that is that is a horrible thing. That is I, I'm I'm sad. I'm sadder now than I was an hour ago. But yeah, it's <laughs> a thing. So be aware of it. And also this one. No, that's not how it looks, Nathan. It probably looks more like that. There we go. Uh, who was this one? That sure. was for me, yeah. Okay. So uh, last year I saw, I know Adrian, he's part of the Buffalo um, WordPress community and he speaks and does a lot with accessibility as Jen probably is aware. And uh, last year he, he was speaking out against audio eye as overlays as we know are not something that's actually accessible it's giving the ap ap appearance of accessibility and makes somebody who's doesn't need accessibility feel good about what they did sorry but, can i just uh, interject is audio i e y e is that the name of a product which is an overlay is. right okay yeah. yes yeah. and so once adrian had spoken out against overlays audio i actually sued him to shut him up and uh, now that suit has been um, uh, settled. What's the word? Settled. Thank you. It has been settled, and Adrian is not in trouble. It seems, uh, but Audio Eye is going to be paying ten thousand dollars to Association for the uh, Blind, one of those yeah, organizations. I a, can't recall exactly which one. Mm -hmm. So, is, yeah. do we do? Do you think, Michelle? It sounds from what you've just paraphrased there that that you think mm -hmm. this is a good outcome, right? This has ended the way. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean. Um, it could have been probably could have been a lot better, but um, Adrian is not being held responsible for speaking out against um, poor technology for accessibility. Yeah, but still, you've had your name gone through the mod yes. for a bit, and you've gone through the legal process. Oh, it's worrying been rough about... for him, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that yeah. that he's, you can't he's measure had to spend that, right? A lot of his own uh, yeah. money and get donations to help cover his legal mm -hmm. costs. And you can imagine yes. that. Uh, that's, I'm going to say this and it's going to sound wrong. That's maybe audio. I think that that's $10,000 well spent because they've managed mm -hmm. to put the frighteners on a lot of other people who, you It's know. part of a whole trend of slap lawsuits, S L A P P lawsuits that are geared towards basically trying to make people who speak out against overlay technologies and similar stuff to shut up. There's uh, several lawsuits in other countries against other organizations and people that have been raised by these various um, different overlay companies because they, quite frankly, have a huge amount of venture capital money and they're willing to throw, throw money at shutting people up if they can. Uh, we've ended on cheery notes today, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> no, this is cheery, I guess. There's 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 a roller coaster, but hopefully Adrian has just got himself off it. Um, but it sounds like a positive outcome, even though in the process of going through it, no doubt Adrian has gone through the ringer. So, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that to my attention, uh, Michelle. Mm -hmm. That's great. I'm just going to mention a couple of things that are not anything to do with WordPress, but I think they're interesting anyway. Uh, Microsoft is going to, this is the, the juggernaut that is AI. That, that I actually think is going to be the story of 2024. Uh, there's going to be a key. Uh, a hardware key on your actual physical Windows-based keyboard, uh, which is the Copilot key. Um, so you can imagine that you know if you're buying a computer anytime from I don't know July or something this year, and it's a it's a Windows machine, it's going to have a key to invoke Copilot. And I was I was saying before we started the call, you imagine the effort that you put into getting your website to the top of Google, 
and how much effort and time you put into that. Imagine that you had a key that was on everybody's Microsoft Windows-based keyboard that would invoke your product over all the others. I mean, for whoa, <laughs> that's a fairly ballsy statement about what they intend to do with Copilot. I think you know there's going to be a lot of people using that, and we will have what I like to call the tyranny of the default. Um, I'm not much of a fan of AI in any way, in any case, but you know this just is a pretty, pretty bit interesting move by Microsoft. So there's that. Uh, also, I'm not even going to do that. It's such a waste of time, but it was quite funny. <laughs> uh, shall I do it quickly? Okay, I found this. You can fire a cannon into a room, and it's hysterical. It was a Christmas thing, and I just thought it was brilliant. You'll have five seconds of me firing stuff. <laughs> a great way to nearly finish. Last one. Uh, no, second to last one. Uh, penultimate one. Uh, Twenty billion dollars was what Adobe were proposing to pay to acquire Figma, and they're no longer doing it. It seems that they have been pressured by regulators. Um, I think if Adobe had have got Figma, they would have really kind of dominated the the design software field for the next decade or so. Uh, I don't know what that means for Figma, whether or not they're going to go and try and find some other way of selling themselves off, but $20 billion, oh, <laughs> that's a lot of money for a piece of software which is used by graphic designers. That's pretty amazing. Anyway, so if you're a Figma user and you don't like Adobe and their recurring fees, hold your breath. Let's see what happens. And finally, uh, incognito mode uh, is not quite as incognito as maybe you thought. Maybe you knew this already, but Google have just paid out $5 billion uh, it was a class action lawsuit basically saying your incognito mode doesn't really do much in terms of incognito, does it? And that little that little icon that you've got of the guy in the hat looking like a, a detective, it turns out really all it, was all it was doing, and to be fair to Google, they never actually claimed otherwise, but I think the intuition was that it was doing more, is it doesn't really do much in, except clear your browser history so that the people who next use the computer can't see what you did. But all the telemetry from Chrome, they were Google were getting all of that data, and that data could be used and probably or possibly was in some way. They clearly think that they had something to answer for, because who shells out $5 billion and <laughs> unless there's a case to be answered? I don't know if this changes anything. I don't know if incognito in the future will be more incognito. Uh, I think all the browsers are doing the same thing. So it's not like Google are uniquely guilty. But uh, yeah, $5 billion. Ouch. So there we go. It started all happy. And then it all went sad towards the end, didn't it? I'm sorry about that. Uh, but that's the way we roll sometimes. Thank go you. Go back to the canon. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. We'll put the, no, we won't. I was going to say we'll put back on for the moment. Uh, you can see, look, it's more or less pitch black here in the UK now. Three o'clock in the afternoon and it's nearly dark. It's ridiculous. I'm going to write a letter. I don't know who I'm going to write it to, but heads must roll. It's far too early in the evening. Thank you so much to my co-host. You see, I remembered Michelle Frechette. Thank you very much. Thank you to Mark, who's going to say his own surname because I'm going to get it wrong. Ben Zakane, and thank oh, you for having me. <laughs> thank you so much. And thanks to Jen Harris for joining us today. Now, Mark, you may not know, but I have to do this we do this slightly humiliating thing oh jen look at her go uh we all raise our hands simultaneously and i take a screenshot of it so would you mind oh he's a good sport look at that straight away gives a wave that's perfect thank you so much we'll be back next week we'll be chatting with some different guests and panelists and all of that kind of stuff thank you for making comments if you did uh really appreciate it and we will see you uh this time next week for another episode of this week in